Well, we're going to go right off to our next presenter. Uh, Curtis Brown is a Minnesotan by birth, an Iowan by choice. He's lived and worked in Ankeny for three years. He saw his first Pachakta earlier this year and knew he wanted to do one. Tonight's the night. So since it's, since it's November, the month of Thanksgiving, he's grateful for the people that brought Pachakta to Des Moines, adding yet another reason to stick around Central Iowa. Such a sucker. Such a sucker. <laughs> for his family and coworkers, he shared enthusiasm for this project. And he's also grateful for the work of Seth Godin, which is his topic of his presentation tonight. Mr. Curtis. So it was March 2009, and I was preparing yet another PowerPoint presentation, and my typical habit was to choose some clever template from Microsoft, maybe a few icons that really got to the essence of what I was trying to say, and always a title slide with the date and venue in case you forgot what day it was or where you were. I knew there had to be a better way to do this. So I found a blog post called Really Bad PowerPoint by Seth Godin. The two key takeaways. One, no more than six words per slide ever. And two, your slides don't work without you there. Very pachacha. I liked what I read, so I clicked the bald head and signed up. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about what I've learned since. The very first blog post I got from Seth was about how to not have your work, your organization, or yourself be demonized. Seth says, open up, let people in, engage, and interact. It turns out that when you open the door and become a real person and treat other people as real pe people, it's really hard for demonization to survive that interaction. A great way to relate ideas is to tell great stories, like Seth does. He ran into David Byrne of the Talking Heads at a conference. He said hello, and David barely responded. Why was David angry with Seth Godin? He doesn't look angry. <laughs> well, he's not. We often misinterpret people's reactions. So assume, people, uh, assume that you're less offensive than you think you are. People have a lot of other stuff going on. It's too easy to stay really busy at work and put off the work that matters. Seth writes, perhaps it's time for the blank sheet of paper, the cancellation of a longtime money loser, the difficult conversation, the creative breakthrough, or you could check your email. <laughs> so one day, I received an email from Seth announcing his new book was going to be released. He invited readers of his blog to make a donation to the Acumen Fund. That's the fund CEO Jacqueline there. And then he would send a free copy of the book to those who donated. There is no question about what to do. I donated and got my book right on time, exactly as he promised. That's just what Seth Godin does. The book is called Lynchpin. That's actually a cotter pin, but it, 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 they do the same thing, but I like the drawing better. It, it holds the words together. Now here's the question. Are we doing work that our organizations can't do without, or are we taking orders? Are we indispensable linchpins or interchangeable gears? I love the way the book starts. Rather than calling you names, belittling your efforts, and shouting at you to be more like him, Seth starts his book by calling us geniuses. He doesn't tell you how your design firm or social club can learn valuable lessons from Fortune 500 companies. He tells stories about artists, not necessarily the paintbrush kind, but people who treat their work like art, like my two books. Another story. Seth was talking to a religious leader who said that on many days, her job is just a job. You show up, go through the motions, get paid, go home. It's disturbing to us, of course, because spiritual work somehow should be real and not fake. But here's the question. Isn't our work spiritual? We can view our work as an art form, a calling, an essential worth doing. But here's the problem. It's in your amygdala. This little part of your brain can save your life by helping to avoid danger, but it shuts down the bigger part of your brain that relates and creates. It's in charge of fears like, they'll laugh at me, it's too risky, what if it's a disaster, or I'll probably lose my job. It turns out, actually, that we're more likely to get passed over for great jobs if we keep obeying fear central in our brains. Taming the amygdala is what frees up a linchpin to do indispensable work, like taking smart risks, being remarkably kind and generous, doing what your gut says is right, daring to be real people at work, and being less busy, but more engaged. So the secret to keeping your great job is on page 196. Here it is. If you give your boss the gift of art, insight, initiative, or connection, she's less likely to shop around every day looking to replace the commodity work you do because the work you do isn't a commodity. So it's your choice. Take orders, get check and repeat, or be remarkable. Vote here. <laughs> Lynchpins are generous. They give remarkable gifts to build relationships or change things for the better. Seth's gift of his book was remarkable, and it made my life better. Gifts aren't always things, of course. A handwritten note, your time, your smile, your insights, 
sharing a book or article, actually caring are remarkable gifts. This ship you see here, it's not stopping. It left on time and it's going to deliver. So commit to ship your art on time. It can always be better. There may be broken links or spelling mistakes, but ship it anyway. The more we ship, the easier it becomes to ship, and the more remarkable we and our work become. This is Oxel Timer. He directs choirs, composes music, and he teaches people how to relax and enjoy singing. Almost anyone can be taught how to uh, conduct a choir. It's not that hard. Almost nobody can imitate Oxel's art. Singing with him or listening to a choir under his direction is rare and valuable. He's a linchpin and can't be replaced. In the seven years that I sang with Oxel, we gave hundreds of concerts, literally. Not one of them was perfect, but we never delayed a concert to perfect just one more note. We shipped on time as promised and we enjoyed it. Oxel reminded us that we're in charge of the experience. No enjoyment, no engagement, no art. I got this coin from Seth to remind me of the choice we have. But for me, I'll be honest, it's not easy. There's a lot to do every day and things get busy. But one way to choose is to ship. Make promises and keep them. Deliver something before the deadline. Give your team a proposal for a new way to do things. Heads or tails. From his March 8th post, you don't rock all the time. No one does. But you might rock five minutes a day. Five minutes a day, you might do exceptional work that matters. And five minutes of rocking would be enough because it would be five minutes more than just about anyone else. So here's the big question. What's your superpower? We want it to be something safe like, oh, I'm punctual. The problem is lots of people are. Maybe your superpower is group facilitation, organization, creating good processes, humor, writing, or empathy. Whatever your superpower is, identify it, then use it to create art and do work that matters. Here's the good news. You don't need anyone's okay to treat your work like art. Consider page one of Lynchpin your permission. You're a genius after all. Fear is painful, but shipping's a joy. Here's our green light. Go, do it for yourself, for your community, and have fun.